suppose f from a b to r is a function we want to understand if f is integrable or not we already know that f will be integrable if for each epsilon greater than 0 we can find a partition we can find a partition p such that u of f p minus l of f p is less than epsilon now from the way in which these upper sums and lower sums are defined it is clear that this quantity u of f p minus l of f p will be less than epsilon if and only if on each sub interval determined by the partition the variation of the function f is very small in other words if you just rewrite this as capital m i minus small m i delta x i we want this quantity to be small we want this quantity to be small if this quantity is always large then it doesn't seem like it would be possible to make this entire summation capital m i minus small m i delta x i to be small okay so the one reasonable intuition behind what an integrable function is is that the variation in the function on in sub intervals is not too large now this is seen clearly when we showed that any continuous function will automatically be Riemann integrable. Continuous functions behave very well if you make these uh, partitions thus uh, each interval in a partition really small then it is reasonable to believe that capital M i minus small m i can be made very very small and this was captured by using uniform continuity in the proof. Now we want to see whether there are other functions apart from continuous functions that are Riemann integrable. In other words we want to see functions for which this variation capital M i minus small m i is not too large. So what we are going to see eventually in the next few modules is that the precise condition under which f would be integrable is if the set of discontinuities or in other words the set of points where the oscillation of the function f is n greater than 0 if that set is small then the function will be Riemann integrable. So let me write that down the intuition intuition is that if the set of discontinuities that is the bad points set of discontinuities continuities d of the function f function f if small will imply will imply f is integrable and vice versa this is something that is palatable now the only problem is this small that I have written should actually be in quotes because what exactly is a small set there is a precise technical condition called being a set of meshes 0 that captures this definition. This is the definition of set of meshes 0. This will intuitively capture the fact that a set S is a small set. Let S subset of R, we say, we say S is a set of measure 0. 0 if for each epsilon greater than 0 we can find we can find an open cover open cover rather a countable a countable open cover a countable open cover comprising open intervals comprising open intervals let's call this some fancy o this is just a collection of open intervals ai comma bi such that 
i comes from the natural numbers so for each epsilon greater than 0 we can find a countable open cover comprising open intervals such that the net length such that the net length net length summation bi minus ai is less than epsilon okay so a set is a set of measure 0 if you can do this for each epsilon greater than 0 that means in some sense the net length of this interval is smaller than any given epsilon therefore the net length of this interval which we use the more technical term measure the net measure of this inter uh, not this interval of this set s the net measure of this set s can be made less than any given epsilon therefore it is sort of like having no measure at all it's a set of measure zero it's a small set so this is a technical concept so it's good to see examples and many of them examples examples any finite set any finite set is a set of measure zero what i will do is i will keep making these examples more and more complicated it will turn out that uh, i think the final example will subsume everything else but it's a good idea to progress this way any finite set is a set of measure 0. How do you see this? Well, you enumerate the points as x1 to xn and just consider x1 minus epsilon by n, x1 plus epsilon by n. This has one of the uh, uh, elements of the cover and x2 minus epsilon by n, comma x2 plus epsilon by n, dot dot dot, xn minus epsilon by n, xn plus epsilon by n okay now the way i have done it you will get an additional factor of 2 but i want you to check i want you to check that the net length that the net length so let me put this as the set o the net length of the intervals intervals in o is less than 2 epsilon i believe okay Please check this. So that really doesn't matter. The factor of 2 really doesn't matter. So any finite set, I can just I can just look at this finite set and keep making these covers, I mean these open intervals around this finite set smaller and smaller to make sure that the net sum is less than epsilon. This can always be done. So any finite set is automatically going to be a set of measure 0. Enhancing this, any countable set any countable set so let me call this 2 let me call this 1 any countable set is a set of measure 0 this is also not too hard to see what you do is you enumerate this as x1 x2 dot 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 uh, so on you make it the list because it's a countable set you can list it now the problem is there is no factor of n in the denominator that you could do to normalize it. Well, that really doesn't matter. We are now experts in convergence series. What you do is you consider the collection O defined to be the open interval x i minus 1 by 2 power n, come epsilon by 2 power n, sorry, comma x i plus epsilon by 2 power n as i runs through the natural numbers you look at intervals of this type so what is happening is since we have no control over the denominator we cannot have an epsilon by n what you do is you start shrinking subsequent things so if this is x1 this is x2 you this is x3 you make the interval smaller and smaller and you control the size of these intervals by putting this 2 power n in the denominator we already know what summation 1 by 2 power n is and check check again check again that net length net length of the intervals of the intervals in o is less than 2 epsilon i believe okay please check this in detail so this trick is very very useful it will be used many many times whenever you have some countable object and you want to control it you put a epsilon by 2 power n factor somewhere and that will allow us to control the sizes excellent 
Now, the third example is now rather obvious. Any subset, subset of a set of measure 0, set of measure 0 is also a set of measure 0, is also a set of measure 0. This is fairly obvious because what you do is given an epsilon, you just consider the corresponding cover O for the larger set, the same thing will be a cover for the smaller set. So this will work. Fourth example, I want you to work out on your own, show that show that any countable union countable union of of measure zero sets measure zero sets is measure zero is measure zero if you take small sets and take countably many of them you will still get back a small set let me give you a hint so you have to fix epsilon greater than 0 and produce a cover of the union, right? What you do is you produce a you, uh, uh, open cover for each set in this union. For the first set, you make the net length less than epsilon by 2. For the second set, you make it less than epsilon by 4. For the third set, you make it less than epsilon by 8. You see where this is going? This is exactly like the countable set case. In fact, this example subsumes the countable set case. Okay, so fix epsilon by zero and cover and cover the set AI. So any countable union of measure zero sets AI is measure zero. So uh, cover the set AI with an open cover, with an open cover of net length, of net length less than epsilon by 2 power i. This will give you the desired result. Okay, So this is just elaborating the details. The key idea is already subsumed in the proof of countable set is going to be a set of measure 0. Another exercise for you show that show that the Cantor set the Cantor set is a set of measure 0. Okay, so recall that the Cantor set is uncountable. So this sort of says that don't be misled into thinking that only countable sets are going to be sets of measure zero. You have sets like the Cantor set, which are also sets of measure zero. In this regard of the Cantor set, there's something interesting that's happening. We already saw that the net length of the intervals that were removed from zero one is one, right? We already saw that, so it is sort of expected that the Cantor set will be a set of measure 0. So the key thing is sets of measure 0, it's a capturing the idea that a set is small. We are going to now show in the next module that a function is integrable if and only if the set of discontinuities is actually a set of measure 0. This is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the module on sets of measure 0.